Personal story segment tonight, we continue our interview with Comedy Central Titan Jon Stewart. Yesterday, we debated the wisdom of the White House inviting a controversial rapper to a poetry reading. And tonight, we turn our attention to politics. Presidential politics, Republican side. Any Republican possible candidate that you like, that you respect. Uh, Do we have music that we can put under Stewart? Da, 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 that I like? Yeah, that you respect, that well, you I think like, might be I like a few, I mean, like them personally? No, or that like would them? be a good president. That would be a good president? Yeah. Do, 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 do. Anybody. Anybody out of the 50,000 that may want to run. Do, do. Well, look, I, you know, again, the standards for, for, for president, I think I don't expect the president to be a superhero. Let, let, let's get to uh, the elections coming up. Before any Republican can gear up to defeat Barack Obama, they must first destroy all but one of themselves. I would imagine that Tim Pawlenty seems like a, a reasonably uh, logical Tim individual. Tim Pawlenty, uh, are you willing to endorse now? Endorse? Yeah, politely. Uh, well, I'm right now. I'm looking at whose campaign to help run. <laughs> uh, I think he seems like a, a reasonable guy. Uh, Has he been on your program? Mitt Romney yet? looks like if you were to open a box labeled president and pulled something out, it would look like Mitt Romney. So I, I, I guess I would enjoy He's that. He's got hair like you guys got the same Little kind salt of hair. And it goes up a lot. Little salt and yeah. pepper. And we're both Mormons. So uh -huh. there you go. Uh huh. So or wait, I'm you, is that an endorsement of Romney? Do you like his policies? Do you think he's a good leader? I thought that he didn't do terribly for Massachusetts, as I don't think. I think Palenti actually was. Uh, a little worse for Minnesota than maybe Romney, I think, was for Massachusetts. And I look at their executive experience, and uh, I tend to think that uh, executives tend to make uh, good presidents because they've had that experience. All right, so Palenti and Romney, because they did okay in their respective states, you would consider them sure. as viable candidates? I would absolutely consider them as, as viable candidates. Sarah Palin. She was a governor in high approval I'm sorry, ratings. You know what? My, I'm, my, I think my earpiece went out. Yes. I didn't Sarah Palin, I, governor of Alaska, but left of, office with high approval rating. I'm sure she did. Yeah. Yeah. And then they got to know her. No, see, she left with high approval rating. She All was right. in there. Fair enough. Like her? Uh, I am not a particular fan of her style of rhetoric. I think she's too thin skinned. To Sounds like Colbert you're describing. Colbert, I would actually endorse for president. She is reminiscent to me much more of a television personality than a politician because I think that. Uh, her inability to get past slights, it makes it very difficult to, run. I'd like, I would just imagine her at night just with the hands going, did you see that thing that Marcel, that Stu... Newt Gingrich? Hello? Hello, hi. Yeah, uh, listen, uh, he has, uh, the, definitely his head is large enough that you imagine there are great ideas in there. But it's so big, it's almost like they're free-range ideas, and I don't know if he could actually herd them and gather them and, and, and take them in. By the time they're my age, they will be in a secular atheist country, potentially one dominated by radical Islamists. How could a secular atheist country be dominated by religious extremists? <laughs> um, I think that, that Newt does not have the, you know, presidents tend to be very charismatic individuals. And I'm not suggesting that he is uncharismatic, but he doesn't, when you meet George Bush, when you meet Barack Obama, when you meet Bill Clinton, you feel them. You, there's a certain... In a literal sense. In a literal sense, some of them. Uh, Sarah Palin has that, by the way. Uh, she has that she has sort charisma. of star quality she has and charisma. charisma. Absolutely. I, I feel like he doesn't. He would be an excellent guy who stands behind the president going, <laughs> yes. But you don't hate him like the New York Times. They loathe him. Oh, I don't, you know, again, I feel like this country is stronger than any individual you can throw at it. So I don't hate any of these people. And I don't think personally that the damage they can do is so drastic and so great that we would ever uh, be run off course by one individual. Okay. James Buchanan comes to mind, but I'm going to worry about that. <laughs> All right. You now. are old. I am. How about Donald Trump? I pray. For or against that he runs. Dive in, Donald. You know what I did yesterday was very interesting. I said, where's my birth certificate? Get me my birth certificate. And they brought it to my office. I have it. And then I said, you know what? Dip my birth certificate in gold. <laughs> Give it some fake <laughs> and tell it to wait in my bedroom. <laughs> That's how easy it is. Trump 2012. I'm hired. You'd like him. The man puts his name on everything he has. The only other people in the world that do that are six-year-olds. Like that, for a comedian, he has his name on a helicopter, 
who puts your name on a helicopter? Mm. Does he does he lose it in the parking lot? Like what? Why would you have your name on a helicopter? He has he has silly hair and crazy thoughts. That to me, I mean, he spends before he runs for president, he spends his day arbitrating arguments between Meatloaf and Gary Busey. For me, that could be good in diplomacy, though. I, I could mean, put you know, another right. wing on my house if that guy runs. All I'd right. be, I'd be honored. So you're not taking him delighted. seriously. No, you don't take any of these guys seriously, though. That's you probably mark them all. Right. because I think you know. Unfortunately, the system that, that that we've got makes it harder and harder for people to govern effectively because so much of their time is spent running. I actually agree with that. Okay, when we come back, John Stewart will talk about President Obama, and he has some surprising things to say, and I ask him to grade the president. Also, we'd like you to vote in our BillOReilly.com poll. Who won yesterday's debate on the rapper Commons, Stewart or me? So far, more than 30,000 of you weighed in, so we hope you check it out. Also, I had this evening, Arnold Schwarzenegger hides a child he had with a woman in his employ for 10 years. How is that possible? Is it legal? Coming up. We continue now with the personal story segment, a chat with our pal John Stewart. And tonight we're featuring his take on presidential politics, including Mr. Obama himself. Okay, uh, let's see. Is there anybody else in uh, play there on the Republican side? Oh, yeah, Michelle Bachman. Michelle Mybell Bachman? Yes. Uh, I think that uh, if Sarah Palin doesn't run, yes. Michelle Bachman could definitely put on that blazer and try and, and sneak in there you in like costume. Her, uh, I, I think that she is. Uh, uh, I can tell you like her just by the, your face. I, I, you don't want to admit it though, because your left wing audience would then despise you. <laughs> <laughs> you like her. Look, look, look at Stuart. He likes Michelle. Parker. I like the fact that when she <laughs> did her State of the Union address, which yes. was, I, I guess, the third of the night, uh, that she never looked directly into the camera that was recording her. So I kind of got a kick out of that. Her State of the Union response in January bypassed not just the lamestream media, but the cameraman. <laughs> you had the sense that she thought she was being interviewed by America as she gave her things. She was just doing one of these. Now, this is just a, a treasure trove, all mm -hmm. this whole presidential run for you and your 18,000 writers. That's I mean, right. this is just unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable. The whole it's, grail. It's no rapper invited to the White House in terms of a boon. No. We don't get it's, it's not it's, big. it's not that kind of juice. Now, uh, on the other side, Barack Obama, you've criticized uh, the president. My plan will require us to come together and make up the additional savings with more spending cuts and more spending reductions in the tax code. Let's say tax hike. That's like saying I'm not going on a diet. I'm going to add calories to my excluded food intake. <laughs> You said he's let you down a couple of times when he didn't do a far left thing that you wanted. Um, <laughs> How far left am I? I'm I, curious. It depends on the night. It depends uh -huh. on the ratings. It depends who you're you talking to. You really don't know much about me, do you? Uh, and I don't want to. All right. No, that's not nice. It's not. Stu is nice to come in here. But is there ever, would there ever be a scenario where you could see not voting for Barack Obama sure. and voting for a Republican? Sure. And what would that be? What would Barack Obama have to be beside kicking you in the head? Uh... What would he have to be? Is, is what would if he have I didn't, to do? If I didn't have a clear sense of the direction that he, he wanted to move the country and, and somebody else had a more logical sense of, of where to take so it. So you're I mean, an open-minded guy on this. Well, I don't think I would ever be able to convince you of that, but yeah, I, okay, no, I, consider, listen, I consider myself... Millions of people are watching, and, and I'm asking the questions that they want to know about you. Now, I know you said when you took office that you were going to talk to the country like we were adults. But we didn't think that meant like adults who'd been married for 40 years and have that weird... <laughs> Shorthand slash repressed anger that keeps them from actually having to talk to each other at all. Right now, yes. Grade President Obama going into the campaign. Oh, I don't. I can't. I don't. I don't do that. I don't know. The John Stewart scale of how no. much you voted for him. Um, has he lived I up to your expectations? No. Yes. But I. But no, I don't know if that's. But I don't know if my expectations were fair to that individual. I believed. I believed that we were at a more transformative time and. Uh, so, but I, I, I've come to respect a certain uh, steadiness of his craft that I don't necessarily agree with. I think uh, he, he had an opportunity more in the Reagan mold to be a little bit more of a bully pulpit president mm -hmm. than uh, what he appears to be, which is more of a uh, Tip O'Neill president, like a legislative uh, uh, worker, a, more of a, uh, someone who understands a bureaucratic method as opposed to something that's more... Uh, 
you know, uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Ronald okay. Reagan type. I didn't understand a word of that, but it sounded really good. I appreciate you coming in here. I'm a very nice man. To You're do a stand-up guy. Your respect for me grows in leaps and bounds in a way. You're like the Grinch right after he realized they don't need presents for Christmas when you see me. Your heart grows to dimensions you didn't even know about. You love it. You love me because you know we come from the we're the same people. Mm. You want this date to go on forever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> John Stewart, everyone. One footnote: the entire interview with Stewart unedited will be posted on BillOReilly.com immediately after this broadcast.